On September 27th, the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP, leader, Xi Jinping, finally made a public appearance. According to a CCTV news report, he went to an exhibition hall in Beijing to visit a display of achievements under the theme of Forging Ahead to a New Era, an exhibit that opened on the same day. In addition to Xi, six members of the Standing Committee of the CCP Politburo, as well as several senior officials from the Beijing municipal government, attended the exhibition. Xi emphasized the need to widely publicize his so-called initiatives and achievements during his 10 years in power and made reference to firm historical confidence. In his speech, Wang Huning, a member of the Standing Committee of the CCP's political bureau in charge of propaganda, touted General Secretary Xi Jinping at the helm of the ship and said he would always maintain a high degree of consistency with Xi's central government. This appearance has pretty much dispelled recent rumors about Xi in overseas Chinese circles, and even in mainland China, as well as in some English-language media, Xi was rumored to have been subjected to a coup and was under house arrest. A major piece of evidence for this claim was that Xi hadn't been seen for several days. Xi returned home from a trip to Central Asia on September 16th and remained invisible until September 26th. But before Xi's reappearance, we had already figured, that is, after taking into account major events that recently occurred within the CCP, that this rumor had little credibility. Why? We can review the evidence for and against this rumor and explain our thinking process. It's worth noting that this isn't the first time such a rumor surfaced, and it won't be the last. In the deadly struggle within the CCP, such rumors will always be around. They may be false, but may also become true. We can take a lesson from this case on hand and learn how to tell between true and false news concerning the CCP's inner workings. Other than the fact that she didn't appear in the news for 10 days, the main supporting evidence for the coup rumor is the following. This is a video currently trending on the internet showing an 80-kilometer-long military convoy entering China's capital city of Beijing. Netizens with military backgrounds analyzed the size of the convoy, and judging from the distance of the procession, it was determined that the convoy was at least more than one division in strength. The direction of travel is indeed Beijing, being approximately 50 kilometers from entering the capital. This year, there was no military visit on October 1st, the anniversary of the CCP establishing its regime in China. So it seems unusual for such a large number of soldiers to be entering Beijing. In addition, she was absent from a September 21st seminar on China's defense and military reform. He only issued a directive to the meeting, asking the military to focus on preparing for war. According to a video by CCTV, the mouthpiece of the CCP, she indeed didn't attend the meeting. Rumors had it that she has always attached great importance to holding on tight to military power, and this absence indicated that she wasn't allowed to attend the most important meeting on military reform. Also absent was Defense Minister Wei Fenghe, who is considered a close ally of Xi in the military. One person who showed up at the meeting, Li Qiaoming, sparked a lot of interest. Li also sat in the middle of the first row of the meeting. Li is the former commander of the Northern Theater, but on September 8th, she promoted another person to replace him. Li's whereabouts were unknown ever since. Xi Jinping, the leader Wang Qiang, the At that time, it was reported that Li consequently staged a coup in Shenyang on September 7th and 8th. This video was used as evidence that the sound of cannons and planes was heard at the Shenyang airport. In addition, China canceled flights on a large scale, 
On the evening of September 21st, screenshots of many flight cancellations at airports across the country circulated on the Chinese internet. Many netizens asked what happened to the massive flight cancellations in various cities. According to public information, as of 10.35 p.m. on September 21st, 9,583 flights were canceled across China. That is a 59.66% cancellation rate. The cancellations weren't limited to the busy flight hubs of Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, but also extended to three airports in western provinces which had the highest cancellation rates of 87% to 98%. One Chinese netizen wrote, it would be a hell of a thing if there were no major incidents when such a large number of flights are suddenly cancelled in peacetime. It is no surprise for politically sensitive Chinese to feel this way. In late July 2014, there was a massive delay in 12 Chinese airports that lasted 26 days. The delays or cancellations were due to a combination of thunderstorms and routine military drills but the Hong Kong media revealed that the 12 airports were banned from flying at the same time in order to catch Zhou Yongkong, a big tiger who was attempting to flee the country. Big tiger is the Xi government's special term for corrupt officials. Zhou controlled the CCP's political and legal system and the Ministry of Public Security for many years, with a wide range of minions all over the country. It was very likely that he would succeed in fleeing the country. Zhou's fall was due to his plotting with Bo Xilai, the contender and rival of Xi for the CCP's leading position. They tried to seize power from Xi in a secret coup led by former CCP leader Jiang Zemin and his ally Zhong Qinghong. Jiang's faction had been planning it for quite a while, but it fell apart when Wang Lijun, then head of the Chongqing's Public Security Bureau and Bo Xilai's close ally, fled to the U.S. consulate. On the diplomatic front, the supporting evidence for the coup is, in the case of Russia, the statement made by Xi's close associate, Li Janshu. In early September, Li said in Russia that China would respond or cooperate with Russia's aggression against Ukraine. <laughs> But Foreign Minister Wang Yi made a statement recently contrary to Li's stance. China's position on Ukraine is consistent and clear. President Xi Jinping pointed out that the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries should be respected. The purposes and principles of the UN Charter should be observed, and the legitimate security concerns of all countries should be taken seriously. All efforts to help resolve the crisis should be supported. The Ukrainian foreign minister immediately announced on Twitter that Wang Yi had assured him that China would respect Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Thus, during this period, numerous pieces of news about the coup were spread on Twitter and even on the mainland's social media platform WeChat. One of the most widely circulated claims was that former party leader Hu Jintao and former premier Wen Jiaobao had managed to convince a CCP patriarch, a former member of the Politburo Standing Committee, the CCP's highest decision-making body. They took control of the Central Security Bureau. She returned to Beijing on the evening of September 16th. He was controlled at the airport and placed under house arrest at his home in Zhongnanhai. At the same time, such sources also claimed that the top of the Communist Party was reversing government policies. Now let's look at the evidence against it. The most obvious evidence that contradicts the coup claim is that on September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, six tigers in the political and legal system were successively sentenced with heavy sentences. This is the continuation of the story of Bo Xilai, as well as the fall of the gang of Zhou Yongkong, the former secretary of the Politics and Law Committee and the former Minister of Public Security. In the case of the Six Tigers, Vice Minister of Public Security, Sun Li Jun, and former Minister of Justice, Fu Zhenghua, were respectively sentenced to death with a two-year reprieve, deprivation of political rights for life, confiscation of all personal property, 
and additional life imprisonment without commutation or parole. It's indeed a heavier sentence than Zhou Yongkong and the previous vice chairman of the military commission, Guo Boxiong, who also shared the same attributes. In a previous public announcement of the case, Sun Li Jun and Fu Zhenghua were described as having extremely despicable political conduct and ganging up to control key departments, seriously jeopardizing political security and arbitrarily discussing the central government's major policies. There is another remark about Fu, saying that he completely abandoned his ideals and beliefs and has never been truly loyal to the party and the people. Anyone familiar with the coded language of the CCP knows that the one he was accused of having never been truly loyal to refers to Xi, obviously, as Xi is currently the general representative of the party and the people. The question is, if Xi arrived in Beijing late at night on September 16th, he was already under house arrest and lost his power. In the days that followed, how could executives who were disloyal to Xi be sentenced so severely by Chinese courts? Also, a closer look at CCTV footage of the military meeting on September 21st reveals that basically all the top brass of the CCP military were present, most of whom were Xi-appointed officers, including some of Xi's cronies. The CCTV close-ups of the meeting obviously follow the usual sequence of the current vice chairman of the military commission, the current members of the military commission, the potential new vice chairman and the members of the military commission, the commanders of the major military branches and the commanders of the war zones. In other words, what is shown is still the general structure of the military officials deployed by Xi. It is likely that Li Qiaomen, who is widely rumored to be the protagonist of the revolt, is in a normal position of neither promotion nor demotion. That is to say, he probably didn't get a promotion, but only was transferred to a different position. It is difficult to verify the authenticity of the previous video about Li's revolt. Some people have actually suspected it to be an old video from a past event. The claimed location of Northeast China can't be verified either. Some overseas netizens pointed out that the video images came from years ago during the Iraq War. As for Wang Yi's change of tone, calling for the territorial integrity of Ukraine and friendship between China and the U.S., one scene to note is when Russia encountered unprecedented isolation in the UN General Assembly because of its aggression against Ukraine. Only Wang Yi, representing the CCP, met formally with the Russian delegation in high profile, and both sides took off their masks to shake hands in front of reporters. So why are there massive flight cancellations all over China for days on end? There are so many secrets within the CCP that it is difficult to draw any direct conclusions about the relationship between these events and the coup in Zhongnanhai. In addition, in July, the South China Morning Post reported that China would invite the leaders of Germany, France, Italy, and Spain to visit China and with Chairman Xi in Beijing in November. On July 19th, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman responded, I don't know where they got this information from. I can tell you that it's fake news. On September 22nd, as news of the coup spread widely, the South China Morning Post counterattacked Beijing's spokesman. The outlet again reported that German Chancellor Scholz and French President Macron were likely to meet with Xi in Beijing this November. The report also named the former Chinese ambassador to Berlin as having been in Berlin last week to discuss the details of Scholz's visit to China in November. According to what we know about the background of the South China Morning Post, it doesn't belong to Xi's camp, and it can be said to be antagonistic in some cases. The fact that such a media outlet is releasing information about Xi's re-election means that the coup is largely a fake news story. Personally, Xi has a habit of not following the usual rules to some extent. In September 2012, on the eve of becoming party leader, he suddenly disappeared from the public eye for 14 days. During that period, Xi, the much-anticipated successor to the party leader, canceled a rare scheduled meeting with the then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. He also canceled meetings with the Singaporean Prime Minister and the Russian delegation. Overseas Chinese media later revealed that Xi suddenly told the Communist Party patriarchs that he didn't want to be the party leader anymore, bringing the infighting within the party to an immediate stop. 
Under tremendous pressure, the Communist Party patriarchs intervened and finally reached an agreement that Boshilai, the other contender for the party leader, and his faction wouldn't be able to turn the tide politically or otherwise. When Xi showed up on the 15th day in all his glory, the Chinese Foreign Ministry offered no explanation for his disappearance for 14 days, but simply told the outside world not to speculate. This is a dramatic episode in recent Chinese history. Rumors against Xi have surfaced from time to time in recent years. For example, in May, before a major Communist Party meeting, the Beidaihe Conference, rumors that Xi had a brain aneurysm and was in danger of a coup due to his high-handed zero-COVID policy, were reported by India-based ANI and then circulated wildly on overseas Chinese social media, including the British newspaper The Sun and The Daily Mail. No one knows for sure what caused Xi to remain invisible for 10 days after arriving in Beijing at midnight on September 16th. Some speculate that Xi and his entourage returned to China under the 10-day quarantine rule and that September 27th was the first day of that period. However, past records indicate that senior Communist Party officials, especially diplomats, haven't strictly adhered to this rule. Such widespread rumors indicate a fierce struggle within the CCP. The information war can be expected to intensify in the run-up to the 20th National Congress, which will be held on October 16, 2022, especially given the long history of dark operations at the top of the Communist Party and the lack of transparent information from the outside world. Xi will seek a third term at the 20th National Congress and the forces that oppose him from continuing for a third term are working hard. Even if this force is unsuccessful in achieving its goal, the dissemination of such rumors could deal a heavy blow to Xi. It's one way to suggest that Xi's power position is unstable. Even if Xi is re-elected, the internal struggle within the party and the various threats against him won't stop.